And next, another in our occasional reports from journalism students around the country. Tonight, giving U.S. forces a crash course in Afghan culture. At today's White House news conference, President Obama said the furor over the Koran burning incident last month showed the challenges for allied troops in Afghanistan. Dealing with those challenges and gaining a better understanding of cultural differences is the aim of a program based in the remote desert of Southern California. Our report, prepared before the Koran burning, is from Carl Nasman. He's a graduate student in the journalism school at the University of California, Berkeley. It looks and sounds like a typical Afghan village. But these Marines are nowhere near Afghanistan. They're patrolling a multi-million dollar recreation. Lance Corporal Derek Hicks is one of the Marines on patrol. This is basically typical of uh, a lot of villages in Afghanistan. We were deployed there last year, and there was a few towns that were similar to this that we were patrolling through, so it's very realistic. The mock Afghan village is at the Camp Pendleton Marine Corps base outside of San Diego. Even from my vantage point above the action, the scene below seems real. The training facility is less than two years old. It's one of three mock villages on Marine Corps bases across the country. Hundreds of Marines pass through here every week before deploying to Afghanistan. One of them is Sergeant Christopher Roberts. The first time you go on a patrol, you're going to be kind of just overwhelmed with all of the, the culture, uh, the scenery, trying to figure out what's going on, how to deal with these people. If you don't go through something like this, you're doing it for the first time in, in Afghanistan, that's not a good day. Marines here learn more than just combat. They're taking a crash course in Afghan culture. You get all kinds of cultural uh, awareness training, um, and it definitely plays a huge factor. Uh, you might want to like, wave at somebody or kind of point to a certain direction, but uh, if we know that that's something that the local area, like, they, they kind of look at that as an insult compared to what we would, uh, we go through that training, so my guys are able to like, kind of stop themselves before they do it. Their teachers are Afghan Americans, hired for a role only they can play. Hey, hey, they uh, come up, try to shake your hand on patrol and stuff, try to offer you food and stuff, just, just like a typical Afghani. It's good training to have the role players out here because uh, I think without them it'd kind of be pointless to be running the training. Back when I was still a Marine, I wish I would have had this training because the only thing you use for opposing forces is another Marine wearing a t-shirt on his head or a Marine yelling and screaming and kind of acting like a fool, so to speak, and you don't get that realism. Dirk Lenz is a former Marine and the military training coordinator for SpecPro Technical Services, one of dozens of private companies hiring role players for specialized military training. The unit may request, I mean, it could be anything from Somalis, you could have Yemeni folks, you could have you know, Afghans, it all depends on what the needs of the, the Marine Corps is, and then we will try to facilitate uh, that as much as possible. Just outside his office early in the morning, the Afghan role players start arriving for work. Ilyas <laughs> Kazimi is one of nearly 500 Afghan role players on SpecPro's payroll. Thousands more work for other companies nationwide. <laughs> the war in Afghanistan created a steady stream of U.S.-based jobs for Afghan immigrants, especially here at Camp Pendleton. Role-playing is an important source of income for Afghan Americans, a community hit hard by the recession. I was looking for work, you know, as everybody else do, and uh, this is the kind of job I heard that I can do because I speak uh, many languages. Sam Nawabi and other role players can make a few hundred dollars a day working at the base. It pays my bills. I'm the only person working at my house right now. Uh, my wife is new in the United States. She doesn't speak English. And uh, I have a, a low, over a year old daughter. But role playing is more than just a paycheck. The break room is a meeting place for Afghans, where new and old cultures mix. This is the elder generation that have, you know, that, that culture is really, you know, stuck to them from Afghanistan. And, you know, and then there's the other ones that you have where they're blended in between, like the melting pot. Or there's multiple. You got the young guys, you like, you know, hanging out, having fun. We learn a lot more from each other, yes. You know, sitting down with your own Afghan people, speaking your language. Uh, we're getting together to start talking. It's uh, actually, we're being ourselves, you know. We're being ourselves. And we're kind of like mixed up. We're American and we're Afghan, we're American and we're Afghan. The Afghan community is still figuring it out. 
what is our position in the American uh, dream. Hanif Moebi is the executive director of the San Diego chapter of CARE, the Council on American-Islamic Relations. He says role-playing is a controversial job in the Afghan community. Some feel that, yeah, I mean, this is a great thing to do. We're serving uh, America and we're serving Afghanistan both at the same time. It's like hitting two birds with one stone. But at the same time, you have those who, f who believe that, you know, this, this is not necessarily an honorable job because you're taking the side of, uh, if we may, an oppressor. I heard a few negative things. They said, like, um, selling yourself out. Role players walk a thin line, especially in San Diego, a city with strong military ties. Discrimination against Afghans and other Muslims flared up after 9-11, when it was discovered that two of the 9-11 hijackers, none of them Afghan, lived here before the attacks. I just questioned where, you know, like, politically I would stand, or, you know, with my beliefs, where I would stand with it. Because, you know, one, I didn't know what the military was aiming for in, you know, Afghanistan. Two, I didn't know what exactly, you know, uh, they wanted from us here. You know, have roots both places. Yes, I was born here, so it is my, but my parents were born there. Now, a decade after the United States invaded Afghanistan, role players are still coming to terms with their ties to both countries. But like, I was trying to do something, if you can see. Just Outside the base, Ilyas is an art student studying graphic design. This is a, actually another one. This is a, this is my peace tree. His work is influenced by his dual identities. At the roots, the roots of peace are war. In a way, that's kind of what your job is a little bit, like during the day, right? It's like, you're not going there to help people like become better killing machines. No, no, definitely not, you man. Know? I mean, honestly, that, that's the only reason why I do it is because at the end of the day, like, I can tell that these Marines are, are learning something. Three years ago, this was a mock Iraqi village. But as that war wound down, the military built a new Afghan village. Iraqi role players were let go, and Afghans took their place. I think the only thing that will change, obviously, is the, the, the type of role player, the type of culture that they may ask for. Three years from now, we could be asking for you know, Iranians. We could be asking for you know, Koreans. Who knows? For now, the training continues with Afghans. But Marine combat troops will start leaving Afghanistan next year and virtually all troops will be gone by 2014.